And hello everyone, my name is David. I am a student pilot and tonight I am going to do my P3 part one check ride in a Cessna 172. And we are here um, at seven whiskey four and we're going to X-ray Sierra Alpha um, in this uh, first part of the leg of our of my um, check ride. So I am everything is out in the open. Any mistakes I do, everything that goes through, um, you'll be able to see it. So at this time, we're going to start. Um, we are hot. Uh, I am using. I, I am on. Um, X or Vatsum, I'm doing this. So on the weather, since it doesn't look like we have any ATIS coming out of here, the ATIS in real world is um, IFR, but we are clear right now. So um, it's just using the altimeter 2962. But since we're not using real weather today, we are going to stay at let me clear that out again. And then we have our traffic. We are at um, we're at the far end. And then since the wind is not going to be a factor. We're going to be taking off off of that. So let's just start with our airplane inside first. Sorry for that. And um, and denoting everything they have. Okay. So before taxi, we have our uh, standby sta uh, transponder stand on standby. Um, the ATIS information we received over the, um, either you could have called in, uh, do a weather brief, and or um, if it was if this airport, which it doesn't, doesn't have the um, uh, the ATIS up right now. So, but we used our four flight, and we set our uh, pressure here, altimeter, flight levels, instruments are set. In regarding to that. So we are going to use PCT. I'm not familiar with that. Um, not familiar with it, but I am going to, upon departure, going to use what's on here for, for VATSIM. We are going to be leaving at two six. Set on here, and the plane was already hot, so I already had all the lights. Let me just it's on. Okay, so our. Um, that said, everything's still in the green. We are we need to do our flight plan. So we are VFR and we are doing Oh man, I hope this doesn't yeah, crash. Yeah, in and out. Uh, not something we're too worried about for uh, six tech off. Six tech off on the wind, and the uh, wind one two zero and nine are runway one right clear land. One right clear land. Two tech off. Wind uh, just out of curiosity, how long you guys gonna be on? Huh. Probably another hour, hour and a half, probably. Yeah, after that, we'll see if we can do a quick turnaround. And we have an issue with X Pilot. Let's see, but let me 
do it again. So then see first what's on here one two thousand so what are we doing here now we're doing our flight plan uh, let me take this information out of here we are going to do flight following on and what we're looking at is to to make sure that there's the higher elevations upon our departure out of seven whiskey four and as we can see on our um, four flight or if we're using sky vector um, the um, the terrain is a uh, 1200 on there so I'm I'm comfortable of um, actually I'm comfortable staying at 3000 VFR because we will still be above a thousand um, clear of any obstacles or anything on our flight towards X-ray Sierra Alpha. There's nothing stipulating on for flight on there that any obstacles are higher than 1,200 feet of terrain. So we have 3,000. You can go east or west. One VFR, slant golf, and uh, flight following. And we are going to wait 30 seconds to ensure. that they receive it. Let me just double check as I um that's Maryland. So you know what I um frequencies All right Right, before uh, text we have that and we're going to start our, our taxi now. We're really close to uh, runway 26. Um, we're going to just depart. So what we're going to do here is on on a regular, if we were flying out, we would ensure uh, a passenger a safety briefing, ensure that they understood the doors, how to get out, seatbelts are on, firework extinguisher um, is that um, between us in case of emergency and our departure briefing is going to be we're going to be flying um, out of runway 26 and then make a left um, cross traffic um, at uh, 3,000 feet if uh, upon departure and we're still on the runway we have an, an engine failure we will bring it down to the ground and keep it on the runway as much as possible if we're already um, um, above the runway and we have an engine failure uh, anything below a thousand feet 30 degrees to the left or to the right we try to land it someplace uh, to avoid any any possible any other injuries to any other people or um, 
residents or anything else anything thing above a thousand we're going to try to circle back around to land at the airport at two six or anything close to that any questions All right. if you're asking me no okay no so uh, i'm just going through my normal like i usually do sorry so um little taxi brake check and brake check is good. And for the purpose of this check ride and um, in the time, uh, we would do a uh, magneto check, check left and right, ensure everything, the radios are already set. We already did the passenger briefing and, um, and we, the only thing we have to do here is just ensure that our nav, anytime we're set to go. And the last, next thing we only have to do, since we're so close to the runway right here, as you can see, there's, I guess this, this is the FBO, um, we'll be set to go here. All right. And good evening, Lake Anana traffic, Skyhawk, November 7, Delta Romeo is holding short of runway 26 for a straight out departure and then left crosswind traffic to the east, Lake Anana traffic. So, and I hope I didn't butcher that name. And just double check. Oh, everything looks good. Left, traffic. Lake Anna traffic, Skyhawk 7 Delta Romeo is taking 26, the active for Lake Anna. Entry runway 26, Okay, we are set here, two, four, on here, I'm a little off to the side. Um, actually, just leave it like that. All right, we're ready to go on here, 10 degrees of flaps, power being set, and here we go, full power. Take this off here because I can't see. Caution on here. taxiway. On taxiway. Our speed is alive. Everything's still in the green. Five hundred. And. 400 feet. Lake Anna traffic, Skyhawk 7, Delta Romeo, left crosswind, Lake Anna traffic. still looking good everything is still in the green fuel flow is up and we'll keep on climbing Lake Anna traffic Skyhawk 7 Delta Romeo is departing to the east Lake Anna traffic good day
and good evening approach Skyhawk November 7 Delta Romeo went down again. <sighs> well, this is why we practice. Our radios went down. Yeah. Something happened to your ex-pilot over there? Yeah, I, I don't understand. Um, yeah, my ex-pilot just crashed, so I was... I was... Uh, trying to do my radio call and I, I could see it over here as, as a black screen. I, I, I don't understand. Uh, I had no issues yesterday with her. Level at 3000. Power back here. Let me just trim her out a little bit. And then I'll try to restart it. I just don't want it to boot me off my, <laughs> my flight. Alright, um, I'm going to see why it's not letting me go back over here. Oh, it's still on there. So, while I try to get this back started, um, we are doing a um, visual, so if you... it goes on back here. And good evening, approach Skyhawk 7 Delta Romeo. Skyhawk 7 Delta Romeo, Sonic approach, hello, squawk 2145. 2145 for 7 Delta Romeo. I don't crash again trying to get this and I don't know position checks for 7 Delta Romeo request flight following to X-ray Sierra Alpha 3000 Maintaining VFR, 7 Delta Romeo. So when we're doing this flight on this first leg, we are actually doing, I don't want to, um, I know this is in the way, but um, every time I try to turn it off, it uh, it locks me out. But um, we are following, there's a, a railroad that you can use that runs almost like a um, east and west, but almost like a southeasterly direction um, that you can follow in regarding to that. Um, so using visual checkpoints that you have if you're familiar with with that. And I dropped too much there. Even though we are at VFR, we can go 
below 3,000 or flying in there. I like to maintain 3,000 feet here. doing that is pulls it all up and down when I let it go. Come on. We're still good in the green here. We're at cruise. On there. One thumb. And roughly around seven gallons as we advised. Still looking good. And just the river. Let's take one step of the hand. Good, 3,000, everything's still good. Visual point here. So we have to stay one step ahead. Um, it looks like that X-ray CL Alpha um, depending if um, approach says anything or hands us off there's no there's no one in the tower so we're going to use Unicom there at 122.8 just have it in there just in case when he says frequency change approve or if he does give us anything else, then we'll put those in our comms. Um, but always have to stay ahead of the ball game here. So, since um, I don't have the ATIS there and looking on ForeFlight, it's still IFR and we're not using real weather because I'm not I have instrument rated, so 
our weather is going to be denoted as the same as we took off from our other um, our other airports, Seven Whiskey Four. Looking at this, I'm anticipating a straight-in uh, approach into runway 10 if if we're doing winds are calm and everything else. But if not, um, that's my intentions. If not, we would do a come in for a right try for 2.8, just depending on the controller here. But we will find out. Yesterday we had a total different. We were expecting a um, a um, a right uh, base into a runway, and we were given a straight in approach. So it just all depends. But we have to be a step of the game here and make sure that our comms are good. We know where we're at. We're probably around 20 uh, 20 miles away from this airport from uh, X-Ray Sierra Alpha. And let me just check something else out here. It's starting to bring it back down again every time I try to move something. No, shoot, every time I try to use that, it, it actually cuts me off. No, I don't want to do it. Hopefully it didn't do it. Yes, it did. Darn it. I got logged out again. Close program, close program. Hopefully the tower doesn't call me, or approach doesn't call me. Connect, connect. I'm leaving that alone. Just leave it alone. Okay, we're still we're still looking good. Everything is still in the green. Right around 14 miles from the airport. And we had our cruise powered set as we wanted to. Pond and descent. Make sure um, while we start to descent, we will do our power. Make sure our mixture is, is rich. Altimeter, we got that, but we'll get it again when he hands us off. There's no autopilot, and we are still on um, on both. So let me get back that up. And when we land here, we're going to go to the terminal on the left hand side. So we'll probably take, and there's only, <laughs> there's only one um, taxiway. So we'll make sure we hit that so we can go into the GA on the left hand side, which will be on the north side of the road, north side of the airport. Two niner six six for seven delta Romeo, and as I said before, he was going to give us our altimeter. And I think he's using. Let me just use this also to make sure because it looked like my. I 
did it on G. I was trying to get it on here too to see if it can. Seven Delta Romeo looking for the airport. All right, twelve o'clock. Okay, airport in sight. All right, so let's just power back a little bit. And Skyhawk Seven Delta Romeo has the airport in sight. Skyhawk Seven Delta Romeo, uh, Roger radar service terminated. Frequency change to advisory airport. Squawk and maintain VFR. Squawking VFR Seven Delta Romeo, have a good evening. You too, sir. Are you uh, planning on coming back out? Yes, sir. I'm going to go back out, and um, I I didn't put it on the uh, the flight plan. I failed to do it. I'm doing the P3 check ride. All right, I'll contact you on this frequency. You want me to do it also for taxi and everything else? I don't, sir. You can do that on advisory. All right, just making sure. Thank you, sir. Switching over. All right, so we're going to switch over. And he said squawk VFR. So we're going to squawk VFR. Report. And there we are. So the airport is two miles. Started descending a little bit under 110 and slowly start bringing her in so no one's ears are popping and we have no passengers feeling sick. Uh, real world, right? And to one of the traffic, Skyhawk 7 Delta Romeo, it is approximately eight miles to the west inbound for runway 10 to Bonic traffic. And I messed up that name again. to almost a six mile. Everything is good. Descent. We had our wings and flaps. Before landing, passenger briefing. Ensure that all the um, seat belts, seat belts are good. The doors, field selector is on both, and landing lights are on. Autopilot is off. Altitude is 1100.
usually everything is always left hand traffic. Tabone traffic, Skyhawk 7 Delta Romeo is going to be entering a, a left downwind for runway 26. Tabone traffic. Weather is briefed. to downwind at pattern altitude. Nice smooth transition down into our level of altitude. Just stay at a thousand. And Toponic, Topaconic traffic, Skyhawk 7 Delta Romeo on the downwind. On one way 28, Toponic traffic. And the winds were calm, so I, I wanted to land, and I, I mean, we could have landed in straight in because sometimes they do it, but um, I didn't want to try to ride the brakes. And I wanted to come in and see more of the safety precautions in regarding to us uh, flying in here. I've never flown into this airport, so it gives me a little bit of longer runway for me to go instead of me trying to hit the brakes to make a uh, back taxi in here. So we are. Beam the numbers. The flaps. Make sure we're good. Four. And proceed down. And Tabonic traffic left base for runway two eight. Tabonic traffic. Nice and flaps. Balloon up a little bit. Keep your speed up. A little high, but we can adjust. Too high, too high. We can adjust. Unstable, unstable. Keep it steady. We have plenty of runway. Plenty of runway on them. Keep it going. Everything's still in the green. You've made the runway. Power back. 
10. Excellent. And we still had 3,000 feet of runway left. And we should have a turn here to the right. Let's just cross over here. And we are fully across. And Topahonic traffic. Skyhawk 7, Delta Romeo is clear of the active 28 when our traffic. So we clean everything up, ensure that everything is good. It's on that. Nav, landing. Good leg. So now uh, you can go ahead and uh, you can just taxi to wherever is convenient for you to hold short of the runway. There's not going to be any traffic in here. Okay. And um, you can get yourself set up for the next leg and uh, get everything set up and then uh, feel free to depart. Okay. So you just want me to go right just back onto the runway and... Yeah, just hold short of it and just... Because uh, I know you're going to need to do a back taxi if you want to use to it again. So just pull up to it, hold short of it, and whenever you're ready, take the runway and go. Okay, no problem. Let me get everything situated here. All right, so we are here. Now we're going to be leaving out of actually simply alpha. Let me just do something here. Move. And we are and we are going to Richmond, and I know we're not using, I know we're not using, um, we are doing VOR um, into this, so put on here, then I am going to use if no one has ever used this, I am new to Sky Vector, and I'm going to try this. Um, it's a great tool that I've been that I was shown yesterday on my um, P3 practice ride. Um, I'm always always using ForeFlight, so we're roughly around 1:30. Did twenty degree? Yep, nine. Uh, I can't do the five over here, and it's not like the other ones. And it's zero one forty Zulu. And the good thing about this is you have all the information on here. Um, we're not using um, real world weather, so we're doing clear skies on everything. But if you had to, you can use it right here um, on here for eight knots out of the airport that we're, we're coming out of, which I've butchered this name. So anyone that lives in this area, I do apologize. And then we're coming over here. And again, we're not using the real world weather, but we can see the 110 at nine and this IFR out of here, half mile, um, as you can see on on your um, on here. So um, we are going to use the VOR, Richmond's VOR, 114.1. So let's go back here, activate this, 114.1.
So we're going to use that VOR and we're going to use the same weather. We already know our, uh, we're going to use the same approach here as soon as we depart. And what we have to do, oh Lord. All night long having problems with this flight plan. as it comes up here, close the program, close the program. Open it back up. Connect. Flight plan. And Kilo X-ray CO Alpha. Kilo Moon into Charlie. Do 140, give just enough time, and that is And now we are heading back um, to the southwest. So we are VFR and we are getting flight following, but um, we're going to go up to 4,500 today on the way back. And I gotta put the Richmond RIC, that's what we're following. So ensure that everything is on here, everything is correct. Give me enough time to go through, slant golf. Even though you're fly, uh, fo uh, filing this flight plan um, for ATC, uh, we're still, we're gonna still have to give this information out after we depart. So at this time we are going to be departing again and since the winds are calm and everything I'm not going to back taxi. I, um, I'm not going to back taxi. I'm, I'm going to take an intersection departure. We have 4,300 feet and when I landed I, I, I we, we did really good so I am going to depart to the, um, I'm going to depart to the east and then make right, um, right cross grin traffic depart and then head out towards the southwest. And then looking at what we have, my altitude is good. There's nothing in the vicinity towards Richmond International that is, um, any height on that, so. And then depending on Richmond, what we have, we'll set up everything for our arrival as soon as we depart on there, so. All right, so pre-departure, make sure our seat belts and everything were good. And we are on ground here, let's just report now on there. Um, ensure that our lights are on. We're still doing good on on fuel. And flaps. Throttles fill Mitch and briefing was made in regarding to our departure out of the airport and there was no question. Same thing for um, departure 
if um, we have an engine out or anything that we have to deal with, we will bring, keep it on the runway. Anything um, below 1,000, 30 degrees left or right, and try to land safely. Anything above 1,000, we will circle back out and bring her back into the airport, preferably the runway or the grass area. Seat belts are as designed, and exits are to the east and the west here, or to the left to the right, and the fire extinguisher is in the middle. No questions. We're ready for departure. We're going to do a, a departure here out of there. So we're good. And Tapahonic Traffic Skyhawk 7 Delta Romeo. It will be departing to the east, doing a intersection departure to bar under traffic. And on my map, I do not have, and it doesn't say. Approaching one zero. On runway one zero two thousand nine hundred feet remaining. All right, we are set there. Just make sure I have that on there. And we are good to go here. Power. Full power. Airspeed's alive. Caution. Short runway. Short runway. And 55. And let's just get her climbing here. Right, 500. Tomorrow traffic, Skyhawk 7, Delta Romeo, right crosswind. So, behind the traffic. Let's just click climb in. And Tobago traffic, Skyhawk 7, Delta Romeo is departing to the south. Good evening. Trying to maintain 2,500. Let's keep on climbing. And let's keep on climbing and track. And approach, good evening, Skyhawk 7, Delta Romeo. Skyhawk 7, Delta Romeo, what's up? Just uh, leaving out of the Potomac um, 1,500, climbing to 4.5. I have the weather um, VFR fo flight following to Romeo, India, Charlie, please. Number 7, Delta Romeo, let's walk 2140. 2140 for 7, Delta Romeo. I need to put that. Delta 134, turn right heading 280. Right to 280, Delta 134. Keep it right there. Number 7, Delta Romeo, radar contact uh, 25, northeast of Richmond. That's uh, 2000. And uh, maintain VFR. And confirm the altimeter. Wow. And November 7th, Delta Romeo, the Richmond altimeter, 29062. 29 for 7 Delta Romeo. All right, so I don't want to be chasing this. Delta 134 is three miles from Catron, turn right heading 340, maintain 2500 until established on the localizer. Cleared ILS, turn right one approach. Come on. Right to 350, uh, maintain 2500 until um, established. 
134. See ha what happened there, ladies and gentlemen? It knocked me out. Two zero will be fine for seven Delta Romeo. Oh, hopefully I didn't go down again. Oh, it did. Darn it. be real life this is like what can happen <laughs> your radio comms go bad you're trying to do everything you're doing a climb and you lose it so let's just keep focus on climbing here and I'm not um, in approach 7 Delta Romeo I'm back with you I lost my comms and I like to do an amendment on my I'm gonna stay at 3,000 instead of uh, 4,500 as I filed So we're just going to say I'm just having so much of a problem with these comms today. I just don't want to keep on flying up. Keep it 3,000. We're going to be coming into, um, let's just sit. Two, we'll go for 2 zero for 7 Delta Romeo. Left base for two zero straight in for Richmond for seven Delta Romeo. Okay, I know I'm following the VOR and it's going through here. Um, we're doing good and we're slowly climbing. I'm sorry, I missed the end of that. Say that again. He told me to go directly straight into Richmond and make a left base into two zero, but I know I'm doing a VOR. I'm just, I was talking to myself at the same time. Well, once you have the airport in sight, you can do it. Okay. This has been um, some check ride. <laughs> oh my lord! Yeah, we'll we'll talk about we'll talk about what what that means at the end of it. But for for this, once you have the airport, then you can maneuver for what he told you to do. Okay, no problem. Power set, every trim. Elevator say lights required. We're still looking good. Moving ahead. We're going to RIC. scared to touch this. <laughs> All right. We should, uh, we're going to do um, two zero, so on there. Right now, uh, sorry. So looking at the weather, it's still IFR as we reported in our full briefing since we've been um, doing our legs. So um, we are expecting runway 20 left base into Richmond. And um, that's what we're going to get. Let's bring down just a little bit. Don't want to lose 
use that VOR. Slight corrections. That was just too much to the right. So what are we doing now? We're just not sitting here talking. We're looking ahead to check. We were checking weather. Weather is brief. We're using not real world. We're just using calm left base into two zero. VOR is set and um, ground is one two one point nine and tower is one two one point one. Unless he gives us something totally different, let's get prepped. Two one. Point one. Enter, and then we'll enter ground later. So when we land at two zero, let's see what we have here. Uh, we have Richmond Jet Center. So we, if we don't make the first one, um, well, not the first one, but if we don't make Bravo, we make Charlie, and expect Charlie to Alpha, Alpha to Romeo. One of those over to, to Richmond Jet Center, unless there's something right ahead, and we can just pull over in Charlie to straight into. It looks like another FBO, but that's what we expect straight in into one of those FBOs. We have an FBO in the beginning, and then have Millionaire at the end. So not familiar. Slight corrections. Stay right there. And the closer we're getting, the more sensitive it's going to be. And we are like nine miles from the airport. Let's hope I can see it. That's it. Oh, there she is. Oh, I lost it. I hate that. Just make sure. Four. And This is in sight. And roughly eight miles out. Do a modified lift base into here. Still looking good. Descent checklist will have the power and we'll start doing mixture. That's why the uh, ADIS was ready to receive as brief. Altimeter was set. No autopilot. And fuel selector is still on both. And good. Seatbelts are on. And approach Skyhawk 7 Delta Romeo has the airport in sight. Lose my freaking comms again. Oh, Lord. ATC is going to kill me again. Well, at least you know what it feels like. It's how to lose your radios all the time. <laughs> Connect. And hopefully he hasn't been calling me. That's why it sounds so dead. And approach Skyhawk 7 Delta Romeo. Skyhawk 7 Delta Romeo, go ahead. Yes, sir. I've been having problems with my comms. Um, I just came back on. I have airport in sight, roughly seven miles to the east. Skyhawk 7 Delta Romeo, make straight in runway 20. The wind, uh, let's see, 110 at 9 runway 20, clear land. 
uh, straight in for 2-0 for Skyhawk 7 Delta Romeo clear to land. All right, so as we can see, it's just to the left. It's almost like a modified left base here, but we're going to descend. Balloon up a little bit. Everything's still in the green. Looking good. Uh, the flap blowing up a little bit. Gear is fixed, everything's still in the green. Speed, airspeed is good for it. It's only the pleasure making 4515 with you while we're bumping. Figure 4515, Potomac approach low, you can expect the ILS to run with one approach. Washington altimeter is 2964, descend to maintain 6000. And we're at 70, right, 68, as we're supposed to. Approaching two zero. Still looking good. Airspeed still good. Still good. Everything's still in the green. Airspeed so good. And that looks like the terminal, so we'll probably just go all the way down to Millionaire if it lets us go. No one's behind us, so. Alright, airport's made over the numbers. Set her down really good. Power's off. Nice. See if we can keep the speed up a little bit. 5,000 feet remaining. Mike, tell me to get off. Um. 4,000 remaining. And approach Skyhawk 7 Delta Romeo is cleared uh, all the way down to the end to Millionaire. Skyhawk 7 Delta Romeo, uh, any right turn when able and taxi to the ramp to get out of the lead. Thanks for flying. All right, right turn when able via Alpha, and thank you so much. Have a great night. You too. Air Force One, runway 19 left. Air Force Air One. Huh. All right, let's just clean this up here a little bit on here. On there, lights, nav, landing, strobe, and this.
This is Echo in front of us. Alpha with him, and Millionaire is at the end. So that was very interesting. A lot of comm radio failures, a lot of things to look at. Did I make mistakes? Yes, I did. Made um, several mistakes trying to fix the radio and Um, I was losing my altitude at some times because I was trying to pay attention to that, but that can happen in real life. So we have to ensure that we're paying attention. All right. How much fuel do you say you're going to land with? Um, we landed with 20 gallons or 10 gallons worth. Uh, no. How much is that in minutes? About. can't remember um, Shane the formula right now you cut out if you say it so we no, have about I, 10 what's that we have 10 gallons worth of fuel and I can't I can't remember right now off my head I, I, didn't, I didn't have my ex that's okay uh, how much how much is that in minutes about how much is 10 gallons in minutes um, well, we have 10 gallons. You can do s almost 60 minutes. Yeah, about an hour, right? Yeah, about an hour. And uh, what's, our, what's our minimum fuel we needed to land? 30. Very good. So we are perfectly within limits. All right. So let's talk about a couple things. I won't keep you holding. That's a pass for the part one. Um, so let's talk about a couple things. First thing um, is that coming into Richmond. So he tells you to enter left base runway 20. Um, unless he gives you a specific distance, from, you can do that at any point. So keep your track going all the way until you feel comfortable entering the right base. doesn't have to be on a nine-mile final. It could be on a three-mile final or a two-mile final. Okay. So until you're ready to join the base, just keep flying to Richmond. Keep flying direct. Don't have to enter the runway center line until you're ready. Uh, if he specifically asks you to turn base now and enter the runway center line, then do it. Okay. But typically, they don't care that much they'd prefer you not be on the runway center line because then they can pass faster aircraft off to your side i've had that happen to me in real world at gainesville airport i was coming in to land and there was a couple of regional jets coming in they're like slow down we're like okay and we went to slow flight and we were doing like 50 knots over the ground on approach it was oh wow um but basically they they would prefer you left of center line in that case because if there's a jet coming in they'll just buzz right by and you can join right behind them um, so yeah, I just keep on trucking, keep following your line until you're uh, you, till you would normally join base. Um, is is my advice, unless they tell you to do something else. If they tell you to do something else, then obviously listen. Um, so yeah, it was um it was pretty good. Your approach into um XSA was good. Uh, the one thing is you you decided to go for the other runway just because you didn't want to back taxi. That's fine. Um, I would have taken the straight in because I'm lazy. I would have taken the straight in and just exited on the loop and held short at the loop. But what you did was fine. Um, worked out perfectly fine. We got off the ground in plenty of distance. So, yeah, um, not a whole lot of complaints for me. Um, you have any questions? Um, no, I just um, unfortunately my comms used to uh, kept on um failing but like you say in real wo real world that could really actually happen to you when you're oh playing. yeah it could so uh, i was just a little frustrated it got me a little frustrated <laughs> on there but i'm very happy that um 
that I was able to um, follow the VOR and I decided to go from 45 back to 3000 because I was still having, it's hard to fly with a joystick and try to maneuver with your mouse with your, uh, <laughs> to get the, um, the things going on. But um, I felt very comfortable, hopefully um, the same way with you. All right, so I'll put the paperwork in the pass for the part one. So now um, what you have to do is schedule your part two. Um, you can do practice rides all you want as, again. Um, and once you get your part two done, then uh, you'll be P3 certified. Ah, uh, perfect. Thank you so much for your time today, sir. My pleasure. Does anyone walk you through what part two looks like? Or no. do you want to go through it now? No, no, I was going to ask you. I don't know if you were busy or not, but what, how no, does part two? about it. Yeah, how does part so, two? So part two, um, let's see if I can remember it correctly off the top of my head. Part two is departure from a controlled field and transition a Bravo. The biggest part about it is you need to plan to go around the Bravo. So you need a fuel plan to either have to avoid it horizontally or to outclimb the Bravo, one of them. So you need enough fuel to plan for that. And um, your arrival airport is going to be uncontrolled, and you'll be expected to do the full uncontrolled entry into so fly over the field enter a big old swinging turn to enter the 45 to the left down one. you know that that whole long entry procedure that no one likes to do um that is what we make you do the full u.s overfly the field 1500 feet join the left or right down one for whichever side you're coming from and uh land um and uh as long as you land there it'll be it's a slightly longer flight i think it's about 100 nautical miles total maybe a little bit more here i can look real quick um, so that is one thing about it that it makes it uh, a little. Okay. It is it is significantly longer than the okay. other one. Um, Roger. But that is about it for that. It's a pretty easy ride. Let me let me pull it up real quick and I'll, mm -hmm. I'll give you everything. So here we go. Uh, so P three part two, long VFR which traverses across glass Bravo airspace at least twenty nautical miles outside Bravo airspace. Uh, is the departure, so you need to be at least 20 miles outside of the Bravo boundary. can be uncontrolled or uh, or controlled. VFR a class a cross class Bravo, at least 100 nautical miles en route. And then your arrival uh, has to be non-towered, and that's about it. All right, perfect. And then, of course, the CFI, or the instructor picks where we're going, like you did. Correct? Did I lose you? No, sorry. No, I just misclicked. Um, so, yeah, just like this time, um, they'll just pick it for you. This time I made it easy on you and just picked two airports. Um, be honest with you, I cheated a little bit. I gave you your stopover as an uncontrolled, but it was supposed your to be controlled. I'll admit that in the write-up, but I don't think it made a difference. You flew it just like it was controlled and... So uh, I don't I don't really think there's there's such a big deal with that, uh, but I will will admit to it, and uh, there should be no problem with it, and it'll get processed shortly. All right, perfect. I really do appreciate. It. Thank you for letting me video um, this P two uh, P three check yeah. ride uh, part one, and I really do appreciate your time. Yeah. All right. Have a good night, David. You too, sir. Thank you. So here we are. We're disconnected, and for everyone that's watching, I want to thank you for coming aboard and flying with me to do the P3 check ride part one um, through VATSTAR, um, as you can see. Um, a lot of challenges today. I passed, that's a great thing. Did I have some issues in when you guys see it? Yes, um, with all the distractions and everything, but it's still no excuse. Um, I'm, I'm very happy with my accomplishments tonight and um, going through. Now I'm going to study for the um, part two of the check ride for VATSTAR. And uh, thank again for Shane for, for his time today for doing the P1. Thanks along uh, regarding to all the uh, mentors and instructors that continue helping out VATSTAR for all the students that are learning how to fly in sim world or real world. Doesn't make a difference. Thank you. They do everything for free and we should appreciate their time each and every day uh, for those who are teaching us. Again, thank you again for everyone for joining. My name is David, I am a student pilot, and I am um, welcoming you guys again for Red Star. You guys have a good night.